Okay. So now to begin the technical part of the course. Uh, in for us uh, in control theory, the question, the first question will be uh, to understand the things we want to control. Okay, control theory is about controlling something. First, we need to understand what we can control. Right. So, for example, if we want to discuss an autonomous car, we need to understand how we discuss this car. Right. Before we can say how to control it, we need to understand how we describe it. Okay. And uh, this is uh, crucial. And you will see in a matter of three lectures, you will see exactly why it is crucial. All right. But for now, you can trust me. Uh, we need to understand how we discuss things that we can control. And in particular, we will discuss them in terms of ordinary differential equations and something that we call uh, state space models. All right. So let's start. So ordinary differential equations. That is something that you already studied. So I take advantage of your knowledge of uh, the subject to, um, uh, how should I put it? To go fast, to go fast. We're not going to require all the knowledge that you had uh, from your differential equation course, only some of it, only some of it. All right, so let's start. So we call a normal form of first order OD this equation here. So x dot equals to f of x uh, t, f of x t. This is a uh, normal form of the OD. Here, x equals to x of t is a solution to this equation, right? The solution to this equation. T is a free variable. Like so, usually for robotics, it is time. Okay. So hopefully this uh, so far is familiar. Okay. So x dot derivative of x. X is some kind of variable. Uh, equals to f of x and t. So derivative depends on the x itself and on time. And the solution to such a d looks like some kind of function of time, which describes how x changes with time. Okay, right. So this equation and any other OD can be called a dynamical system, dynamical system. That reflects the fact that uh, X changes with time. So basically we have some kind of evolution with time uh, of a variable. That is what we call dynamics of this variable. And since this dynamics is usually not written in terms of the solution, but in terms of the law of how to obtain the solution, so in terms of OD, that is usually why we call it dynamics. Okay. All right. Now, uh, this we can call it dynamical system. And X can be called a state of the dynamical system. State of the dynamical system. State means uh, something that completely determines it, determines uh, the further evolution of the system. So you could say that uh, time here also uh, plays a role, and that is true. But uh, we treat time separately. We will get to it. Uh, but except for time, everything here depends on the state, on x, right? I give you one x, and from this x, you can get one solution. I give you a different x, from this x, you will get a different solution. So somehow x completely, or almost completely, if you remember time, uh, determines uh, how the system will behave. Let us uh, get a concrete example. So let's say if you have a pendulum, uh, you can describe it as a first order ODE. And uh, it will be a system of two equations, one for how velocity changes with time, another how position changes with time. And uh, the state would be two variables, velocity and position. Right? And uh, you can imagine that if I tell you velocity of the pendulum is zero uh, radians per second. Position of the pendulum is pi over three. 
Well, that describes the situation of the pendulum. If I, on the other hand, tell you, position of the pendulum is zero uh, degrees, right? But velocity is one radian per second. You know that it is vertically down, but it's going, going somewhere. So state somehow describes the position, uh, the dynamical system, its current uh, situation, right? Okay. Sometimes instead of dynamical system, people use the word plant. That is uh, because often control theory in the, you know, maybe older days was used for chemical processes where the object of the study wasn't like a pendulum, but more like a whole chemical fact, like not as a whole factory, but quite a large you know, part of it. So we would call it plant. That is somehow old terminology that people were using. So sometimes I can use plant to mean dynamical system, which is the same as ODE. Okay, so that is terminology. So here's an example. First order system, x dot equals to minus x three x cubed minus seven. All right. Now uh, let's uh, try to get uh, a more clear view on state, as in what what it means. What a, what does this word means? State of a dynamical system uh, is a minimal set of variables that describe the system. Minimal set of variables. Right? That is the one of the ways to define state. Oh, all of those definitions can be changed depending on your needs, but that is a like a typical you can say typical uh, a typical definition. Right. And a uh, minimal set of variables that describe the system. And by describing the system, what we mean is knowing the current state and all future inputs, that is we will uh, discuss later, allows you to predict behavior of the system. Right? So when we say describe the system, what we mean is if we know this information, we can predict what happens in the future. Right? All right. The idea of minimal set is uh, the part that uh, can change depending on your application. Sometimes we don't use minimal sets. All right, let's uh, see examples. For a spring damper system, and you remember spring damper is this uh, thing where you have a mass. Let me even draw it like this. You have a mass. The mass is connected to a spring. Sorry for the... Uh, Cartoon of the spring and to a damper, which we can draw like this. That is a spring damper system. Spring uh, produces force proportional to the deformation. Damper produces the force proportional to the velocity of the uh, of the motion. Okay. So for the spring damper system, the state would include position and velocity of the mass. Those two variables, they are needed to describe the future evolution of the system. You cannot drop one of them. Like you cannot say, okay, velocity is not important because it is. On it depends how position is going to change. You cannot drop position because on it depends uh, the force exerted by the spring. So both of them are needed, right? Okay. For a double pendulum, for a double pendulum, um, the state variables would include joint angles and joint velocities. Double pendulum, uh, if you remember, is something like this. You have, let's say, two links, a mass at the bottom, and you have two joints, joint here and a joint here. So uh, orientation of those joints so angles that describe the orientation of those joints. For example, the angle between the vertical and the link, the angle between the vertical and the link, uh, would be uh, state variables. And uh, 
angular velocities of those links would be uh, also state variables. So you would have four state variables. It's more typical in robotics to use these types of uh, joint angles, so relative ones. But that is the stuff that you uh, have been studying in introduction to robotics, um, I guess, or uh, theoretical mechanics, depending on your program. All right, so those are state variables, right? Set of parameters that describe the system allow us to predict what happens in the future. Okay. If you have questions, interrupt me at any time, okay? Just remember. Yeah, excuse me. Yes. Uh, I have a question. Please. Yeah. But how do we actually define this minimal set? How do we know that the exact uh, variable or a parameter will be needed in the future or is crucial in understanding of the system? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh... And is it always... Uh... Oh, excuse me, I have mm -hmm. one more question. Uh, go, go ahead. Uh, these uh, variables, can be like position, velocity, acceleration, or uh, you, you told us that joint angles also could be um, uh, a kind of state. And what else could be mm -hmm. a state parameters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. Uh, I, I think like while during the course, you would get a kind of the feeling of uh, what it is. So I would just get a like a small answer. But uh, I promise that during the course, you would get a better feeling for uh, for this. So how do we know? Well, the uh, this is actually, <laughs> in a sense, this is a separate uh, field of study almost, how to create models, OK? How to create models. That is a field of study almost. But uh, so it's not a trivial matter. Uh, usually, what happens is for each mechanical system that is of interest, there is already a well understood convention of what is a state, right? So, uh, for example, uh, it is possible to describe a, pen a pendulum with two state variables: position, and velocity, angle, position, angle, velocity. Right? Is uh, well understood. For a car, you can use sometimes what they call a bicycle model, which means you uh, have a position of the car, you have angle. It uh, angular velocity of the car, uh, sometimes, yeah. So, this is uh, sort of like this, uh, you know, its own like forward velocity. You can say angular velocity of the car, this kind of state, uh, set of um, coordinates. It depends, um, it depends. Uh, but in the simplest case, like if you want to uh, sort of avoid. Uh, complications of real engineering and uh, simply think of it from, you know, like simple, let's say, mechanical standpoint. What you can say is this. There would be some parameters that describe your mechanical system, right? Those parameters can change with time or be static. If they change with time, that is probably indication that they are part of the state, okay? If they are static, that is probably an indication that they are not part of the state. I apologize if there is a noise in my microphone. There is a uh, bird singing outside. Okay. Um, uh, let me give an example. Uh, for example, you have a rigid body falling down. Okay. Rigid body falling down. You know that uh, uh, there are two parameters that change with time. Position of the rigid body and velocity of the rigid body. So those two are likely candidates for uh, to be part of the state. Okay. Let's additionally say that you are considering including um, horizontal position of the body. Well, if the body is only falling down, does not fly forward, that uh, your horizontal position is not going to change. So maybe it, there is no point of including it in your state variables, right? But if uh, this uh, is somehow not a rigid body, but let's say a uh, rocket, like delivering a satellite, um, then it's actually possible that it's going to change. Like uh, maybe during some stages it doesn't change, but during other stages of motion it does change. Then you have to include a uh, horizontal uh, coordinate as a state vector, right? 
in the simplest case, when you <clears throat> don't want to think much, you can say, how many degrees of freedom does my body have? Well, each degree of freedom would be part of the state. Then the derivative of coordinate that describes this degree of freedom would also be a state. So, for example, for a rigid body in 2D, there are three coordinates that describe uh, its uh, degrees of freedom. Uh, two positions, one uh, orientation. So also two velocities, one angular velocity. Together, this gives us um, a, a six uh, state variables. For a body in 3D, there are six coordinates that describe its uh, position and orientation. So six degrees of freedom for a rigid body in space. Additionally, six uh, coordinates that are derivatives of those. So three angular velocity, three linear velocities. So for a rigid body in uh, space, you have 12 states. That is, for example, for a quadrotor, a very reasonable model would include 12 states. Right? Uh, so like example of a rigid body on a plane would be a car that doesn't go up and down. So it would have six states. Example of a rigid body in space is a quadrotor, 12 states. A KUKA robot, if it has six joints, it would have six uh, positions plus six joint velocities. Right? It, so total is 12 states. That is a typical way we think about it. But uh, usually when you do practical work, you already know uh, what is a better way to describe a particular mechanical system. And uh, because people before you have been working about it, on it. So it usually it is not a big concern in the beginning is what I'm trying to say. So uh, yeah, I ho hope I give you some uh, some answer. Yes, thank you. Now it makes sense. Um, and uh, about your second question, uh, what can also be uh, states? Uh, for example, for a motor, the states usually include orientation of the motor shaft, velocity of the motor shaft, and current in the motor windings. So one of the states is the current of the motor. So DC motor would usually have three states, two of them position orientation. One of them is uh, current in the windings. And uh, if you want to describe a, um, uh, what do you call it, um, brushless motor, the types that they use right now in uh, drones and uh, quadruped robots, then it would have three windings. So it would make sense to uh, describe it with three currents and one position, one, one, uh, orient one, sorry, one orientation, one angular velocity. So you could, you include currents in your state variables that's also possible okay okay thank you no thank you for the question that's nice okay anyway, uh if 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 my audio becomes bad uh because the noise is from outside or something let me know i would uh, push the mic closer or something like this so uh, just let me know in the one so i can uh, try to fix it Okay, all right. Now we saw uh, first order ODEs. Obviously, ODEs don't have to be first order. Uh, so, for example, they can be uh, second order, third order, nth order. Here's an example of the nth order ODE described like this. So, here we have y to the power, uh, y, sorry. Uh, n's derivative of y right, as a function of n minus 1 derivative of y, n minus 2, etc., up to the first derivative, zero derivative, and time. Okay. Here, as before, y equal to y of t is a solution of the equation. This is also a dynamical system. And uh, here, the state of the system, we can describe it in various ways, but the classical, most uh, widely used uh, default approach is to describe it like this. The state of the system is y, y dot, y double dot, y triple dot, all the way to y n minus one dot. So everything uh, that is here 
becomes the state of the system. Whereas uh, this guy is not the state of the system, right? But uh, all of those are. Okay. So let's just look at the example. So here is a second order OD is a pendulum. Here we can see the state of the system would include um, angle velocity, y dot, and position, y. Here's another example. DC motor uh, with a constant voltage. So the voltage in this case is 10 volts. So here uh, what we have is a derivative of the current. Uh, I, I just wrote it all as Ys, so not to confuse you with like more names. I don't know if they're confusing or not. Maybe it is worse. But yeah, this is derivative of the current, derivative of uh, the position current. And here, derivative of the position, second derivative. Again, uh, angle velocity and uh, current. So here, the state variables would be y dot 2, y1, and uh, y dot 1, if it enters this equation, would also be a state variable. So this equation would, oh, no, no, y dot 1 would not be a state variable. y dot 1 cannot be a state variable because this here on the right-hand side. So this equation will have three state variables, y1, y2, y2 dot. Okay, those uh, three are state variables in this case. Okay, so far, no, just equations. There is uh, nothing uh, too difficult except the names that we gave. Okay. Now, let us now consider linear differential equations. So linear differential equations are only different in the sense that they can be described uh, like this. x dot equals to some matrix A times x. Okay, That is a linear differential equation. Let us just look at the examples. I think it will be clear. So here is a system of two equations. That is the ODE, right? It's a system of ODEs, but uh, yeah, we will probably just call it ODE for simplicity. So x1 is equal to coefficient times x1 plus coefficient times x2. x2 dot is equal to coefficient times x1 plus minus uh, coefficient times x2. Mm. That is how all linear ODEs look like. It's derivative of some variable equals to any possible combination of all available variables times coefficients. Okay, and uh, there cannot be anything else. So you can't have a cosine here or square or anything like that. It is always linear. Uh, th this sounds very restrictive, and it is. It is very restrictive, but because of this restrictiveness, it is possible to um, do uh, work with those equations, which is almost impossible with uh, nonlinear systems. So systems of this type are one of the key aspects of control theory. So we will have to devote a big portion of the course to um, uh, systems which would be linear. Well, there will be a little bit more to it than equation seven, but you will see some, right? For now, I just want to stress that this is extremely important. Now, as equation six suggests, we can write it in a matrix form. In the matrix form, it would look like uh, x1, x2, x3 dot equals to some matrix times x1, x2, x3. You can see this is very, very clean, right? You have a matrix, you have vectors, like on the left, vectors with a dot, on the right, just vectors, right? So very easy to look at. It might not be as uh, sort of reminiscent of high school as equation seven. Equation seven kind of feels like something you uh, can grasp, and, you know. 
equation eight is slightly more uh, abstract, but uh, very clean, you know, like variables and numbers not mixed together. So it looks nice. Okay. Now, linear equations don't have to be first order. We can have nth order linear equations too. The way they would look is something like this. You would have coefficient in front of the higher derivative, then coefficient in front of the next derivative, then the next, then the next. So you have coefficient in front of the second derivative, in front of the first, in front of the zero derivative, equal to zero. Okay. That's it. It uh, looks complicated, but that is all there is to it. It's uh, just a coefficient times a derivative, plus coefficient times a derivative, and so on. Here are examples. 12 times y triple dot minus 3 times y double dot plus 5.5 .5 times y dot plus 2 times y equal to 0. As you notice, since it is 0 on the right-hand side, it is called homogeneous equations. Okay. Homogeneous. Uh, we will soon uh, see uh, the importance of this idea of homogeneous versus non homogeneous. But yeah, those examples are all homogeneous equations. The last example 2y dot minus 2y, uh, 2, no, sorry, 5y double dot minus 2y dot plus 10y equals to 0. Okay. Simple enough. Now, all of those, all of this was just a review of how we can write uh, dynamic systems. We started with a little bit of dynamic systems uh, with general form, like nonlinear equations and so on. Equations of the first order, equations of the nth order. Then we went to linear systems. We had linear systems of the first order, which come in this matrix form, x dot equals to ax, and the linear system in this uh, long form, right, nth order form. Now, uh, we, we don't have to limit ourselves to this kind of stuff, right? We can, all, uh, in fact, all of those were, uh, at, at least the li linear systems were homogeneous, what we call homogeneous, right? Uh, Right-hand side was zero. It doesn't have to be zero can be something. And uh, here comes uh, the first uh, new and, uh, you know, it's like significantly new piece of information from the course. This function on the right hand side, we can call it an input, input, or we can call it a control. Okay. So uh, u of t is just a function of time in a sense. But uh, we can treat it as, for example, control input. Here I combined both words, right? What is a control input? Well, for example, it is a voltage that drives a motor. Or it can be a motor torque that drives your robot arm. It can be, for example, a thrust of a propeller of a drone. Okay. So all of those. Uh, could be what motor, what control input is. Okay. And then we will all often think about it, U of T, as something that we can choose, right? So uh, where, whereas this part is describing the system that, let me use different color. This part describes the system that was given to us, like a drone, autonomous car, robot arm. We cannot choose it. Particular values of y depends on where the of the on the position of the mechanism right now. So again, we cannot really do anything about it. It is given. What we can do is to choose the right hand side, so this non-homogeneous part, this control input as I call it, in such a way that the evolution of the system will follow the desired trajectory. So for example, the drone will successfully land, right? That is, for example, what we could uh, try to do. 
And uh, you can see now this is a slight difference between this course already and the differential equation course. In differential equations, you probably did not think about how you can choose the right-hand side. So the solution will be something that you want. Here, this is exactly what we're going to do. So is a big part of big part of what differentiates us from um, you know mathematical course. Okay, but that is not the only way you can uh, be interpreted. It also can mean external forces acting in your system. Okay, can be external forces. Uh, okay, like wind that acts on your drone. It's possible. You can interpret it this way. Sometimes, instead of U, we would want to substitute something else, like let's say a sine or a step function. Um, step function is a function that is zero before you start, and then it jumps to one instantaneously. There's a call step function. So, um, yeah, you can uh, substitute something else, and then you can study how the solution behaves. This is again uh, slightly different from what you did in control theory, or oh, sorry, in differential equations, but not so different. In differential equations, you probably studied how the solution of the equation depends on a particular solution, right? When you have a sign, for example, in the right hand side of your OD, you did probably try to solve it with the you know, non zero right hand side, and you noticed that the solution is different. That is part of what we want to do here too. The goal for us is to understand what would happen if such input is given, right? How the system will behave. How the drone will behave if the gust of wind blows it back and forth like a sine wave. You know? I understand this sounds a little bit silly when you call a wind a sine wave, but if you uh, had the signals, like course on signals or something like this, you would probably learn uh, about Fourier transformation, which ultimately tells you that almost any signal can be represented as a sum of sinusoids. So I, uh, this is a very common idea, that a, a real complicated signal is just a sum of very small, very simple signals. So studying how your drone behaves when you put a sine wave disturbance on it, makes perfect sense. It is not a waste of time. It uh, helps you understand how it's going to behave in real life. So uh, that is another possibility. So this input U would play a lot of different roles for us. But the primary role would be control input. It is something that we can choose to control the system. If you have any questions, uh, you, you can ask. But as usual, anytime, interrupt me anytime. Uh, so the input that we are giving to the function to the machine is uh, described by this uh, U of T. Yeah, uh, this, that is how we are going to describe uh, our control as uh, some kind of U of T. Uh, this mm -hmm. is slight. This is slightly misleading, I think, because when you when I say U of T. You would assume we would actually write, let's say, a code that says five times t to the power two, for example, right? Like, give me some kind of a function of time. Whereas uh, in actuality, it is a little bit more complicated. Uh, u of t becomes uh, u of x, which is a function of time, and so on. So it's more complicated than that. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, use this U of T is uh, our control. You will soon see uh, like particular examples how it works. Okay, okay. We'll move on a little bit. So uh, I just reminded today we need to understand uh, the object, how we describe objects that we control. That's why we go from one equation to another to another. We need all of this. So next time we can study the first uh, kind of like property of things that we control. But first, the objects themselves, the models, what we call it, the models. All right. So uh, here are some examples of ODs with the input. 
So here, for example, linear OD with two states, y1, uh, y2. And you can see here is the control input, u. Here's another one. We have x1, x2, x3 dot times equal to a matrix times the state plus this vector times u. Notice that those two equations, 13 and 14, are almost identical in a sense. Uh, in both cases, the first equation contains u. Here, x1 is equal to this times this, right? Let me uh, make it more clear. Uh, just one second. x1 here is equal to this times this, right? Plus this times this. So u enters the first equation. Other equations would not have u because uh, you know x2 is equal to, for example, this times this, okay? Plus zero. So um, those two are very similar. Uh, what I want to say with this is um, you, you can do with it same as you do with the state. You can put it out of the, uh, okay, like separate it from numbers, right? And then in front of it, if u is a scalar, in front of it, you would have this vector. If u was a vector, in front of it, you would have a matrix, right? So just as before we did it with uh, equations of this type, right? We saw that this is a perfectly reasonable linear system of equations. Now we extend it to include uh, u, right? It's another uh, part of this equation. Okay, let's see if we have a general form. Yeah, and the general form of what we wrote on the last slide would look like this. So this x dot equals to ax plus bu, right? b would be a matrix if u is a vector. If u is a scalar, then b is has one column. So make a vector you can, if you want a matrix. But convention always writes it like this. So I will always denote b as a matrix. In case you are unfamiliar with the convention, let me remind you, bold, uh, lowercase letters denote vectors, bold uppercase denote matrices. So this is assumed to be a matrix, this is assumed to be a matrix, those are assumed to be vectors. Technically scalar, you can say it is a type of a vector. That is a little bit of an abuse, but um, this is a, a very conventional way to describe it, and it makes perfect sense to do it. So that is why we I will keep this. Regardless of if u is a scalar or a, a vector, we will usually use equation 16 to describe uh, something. Okay. Also, for nth order, it would look like this. So this is not surprising. Um, this is not surprising. Okay. Okay. Now, not only inputs are possible for ODE, but also outputs, also outputs. Uh, an output is uh, uh, what, what, what is an output. Depends ex absolutely on what you're trying to do. Right? So it is not something uh, like what is an output is not uh, determined by the nature or some kind of physical law. It is up to you. Basically, it is up to the engineering tasks you're trying to solve. But for example, typical output is what we measure. So if you have a sensor that measures something, that would be an output. So for example, for a drone that tries to land, if it measures the distance to the ground, that distance could be an output. For your car, if you have a GPS, your GPS coordinates can be an output, right? For KUKA robot, if it measures all positions and all velocities, all of those could be output, right? 
Now, so you know, position, orientation, velocity, etc. All of those can be outputs. Sometimes we say that output is what we care about. So not necessarily what we measure, but what we want to do something about. So for example, let's say uh, we have uh, position of the drone, okay, quadrotum. But let's say we do not measure it, like we don't have a GPS, it is inside the room. We don't measure position and, uh, of the drone, but we care about it. So we say this is the output, and we somehow want the output to be equal to zero, zero. So to land it in the position zero, zero. Uh, that is another possibility. So output is not a physical substance. It is what you decided to be. Output is often denoted as Y, whereas the X, uh, state is often denoted as X. You notice that the, uh, through the whole lecture, I used both of those variables. You will soon see uh, why my particular choice of variables is like that. So uh, just suspend your disbelief for uh, a couple of slides, you would see it. Uh, but the uh, output is often denoted as Y, whereas the state is often denoted as X. Okay. Input is always U, almost always U. All right, let's move on. So equation with an output uh, can be written in this in this form. What do we have here? Well, what we have is, oh, let me use different color. So our x dot, it depends linearly on x. So this is a state times a. By the way, a we often call a state matrix. We call it state matrix. Very easy to memorize because, you know, x is a state, this is a state matrix. Okay. Now, plus b times u. b you can probably guess, is a control matrix. U is a control, B is a control matrix. Okay. And here is a separate equation for the output. Output we describe it as Y equals to Cx. Well, uh, C depends on what, what it is. If it is a measurement, we call C a measurement matrix. Uh, if it is like something else, you can come up with a, you know, with a separate uh, name. But uh, C, often enough, we call it observation matrix, measurement matrix, something like this. Observation matrix, I guess, is a more common, a more common term. OK. So th this is a form, equation 17, that we are going to use throughout the whole course. Uh, we are going to see systems of this type. Uh, almost everything will be discussed in this uh, form. Almost, not everything, but almost. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sometimes U and Y can be scalars. Okay. Sometimes they are scalars. If so, then you can hope to uh, be able to represent system 17 as a one OD uh, with a large uh, number of derivatives, one linear OD. It's not necessarily always possible exactly like that. Uh, it's uh, harsh put it. That is a not not such an easy task, but is uh, yeah. But sometimes it works uh, quite easy. Um, yeah. So you can transform it in, uh, into a single ODE, and a result would be like this. Okay. So here, what you notice first is, here's your U, which is supposed to be a scalar, so everything is fine. But notice, here's your Y. So Y is supposed to be output, but here, it uh, just uh, your uh, the variable of your differential equation. And that is, in a sense, the trick. The trick here is that uh, when we talk about ODs, we often prefer to use the output as our differential equation variable. Okay. Uh, this allows us to avoid this additional equation that we have here. Like with 
this representation, which is called state, state space representation, uh, we often have two equations. One is uh, what we call the equation of dynamics, dynamic equation. Another one is observation equation, measurement equation, output equation. Right? So those two equations. Here, we want just one scale equation. That is the difference between those. We don't want to increase the number of uh, equations here. So we do it uh, by uh, using u, uh, y, sorry, as our ODE variable. This is not completely trivial how to do it, but it, uh, you know, at, at least for some equations, it is possible to do it. Right. Okay, for some choices of u, you could y, you can say it is uh, possible to do it. Okay, okay. And uh, this uh, is uh, the reason why I was using uh, e e differently y and x. X you usually use it to represent the state, right? Without saying anything about the output. Whereas y you usually to, to uh, mean to represent output, which also happen to be the state. Like in this case, for example, uh, this uh, the state will be a combination of y, y dot, y double dot, and so on. Like each each variable, and except the highest derivative would be the state. Right. So that is slight difference between those two. Any questions? Uh, in the last uh, equation 18, what mm -hmm. is uh, output? Y. So Y is output. Uh, so y is output, output and everything else is uh, the state? No, the state, uh, Y, uh, the state, so let me just write here. State, this equation would be Y. Um, oh, let me, how, how do I write it? I hope you, uh, this is understandable. This is what I wrote, like dot y. This is like y dot, okay? Oh, I, I think understandable, more understandable would be dy dt. This is more understandable. Then dy squared d squared y. This is a, that's the way to write it. dt squared. And uh, you do it, uh, you do it uh, for all states you have, like, Second derivative, third derivative, right? Fourth derivative, and so on. So, uh, oh, yes, if this is still not uh, very intelligible, let me see if okay. this make it be easier to do. Yeah. So the state is all of those. You know, all of those will be the state. Uh, except for the uh, the highest order derivative. Why is there the state? Well, uh, one way I can say it is uh, solution of the OD would depend on what values they have currently. Without it, you would not be able to predict how D is going to behave, even if you knew how U is going to behave. Another option, how I can explain the same exact thing, is to say, uh, remember Cauchy problem. If you studied, uh, you definitely did in uh, differential equations. The Cauchy problem tells you you have to know initial conditions to solve equation forward. Well, uh, what are initial conditions in Cauchy problem? Well, that is what the state is. Okay, initial conditions of the Cauchy problem is the initial value of the state. Okay, uh, of course you can have multiple ways to choose the state. For example, if you decide, okay, I don't like this, instead what I want is a state that will look like this, two times uh, dy dt. That's perfectly fine. Nothing actually changes there. Um, uh, there is more than one way to choose a state. I'm just giving you a conventional, uh, simple way to choose it. Right? Uh, and uh, I don't want to give you like too much abstract information right now. Eventually, uh, we will see more and more about how you can, how different ways to choose a state differ from each other and so on. So we will get to there. For now, I'm just giving you an example. Like uh, here's the state is X, here's the state is Y 
in all its derivatives. So zero derivative, first derivative, second, third, n minus one. Okay. Uh, did I explain? Um, yes, but uh, what is here output? Y is also an output. So while Y is part, both part of the state and the output. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's a good observation. It's, uh, it's uh, somehow like the whole point of this equation 18 uh, is that we combine output with, with the solution to the equation. So while... Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Uh, that is a good thing to explain. Equation. Uh -huh. Okay, I thought there was another question. Uh, so why equation uh -huh. seven? Go ahead, go ahead. Ask, ask, please. Why? Apologies. Maybe uh, 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 audio interrupts. Uh, we couldn't hear you. All right. Oh, and uh, now, uh, is it better? Uh, right now, yes, yeah, better. Uh -huh. So, um, my question was: Is it the difference between the equation seventeen and eighteen that in equation seventeen uh, we find uh, x as a pure state and y as a pure output? I mean, a pure that uh, state is um, an equation of state we do not consider output. Is it correct? Uh, yeah, you you. I, like, I mean, as a kind of like vibe, yes, this is correct. As in, is uh, is uh, kind of like the difference between how we feel about those equations. You can also say that equation 17 simply describes evolution of x, the state, whereas equation 18 describes evolution of y, the output, right? If you want, if you like those kind of statements, you can make it. It is correct. It's a correct statement. What you said ultimately is also correct. Um, uh, yeah. The, like, I guess the problem here is that it is so easy to make so many statements about those uh, things that uh, it's uh, sort of uh, hard to find the, uh, you know, this golden grain of truth uh, behind all those uh, statements we can make about it. So don't worry. If, if this sounds a little bit abstract or kind of like too vague, it will soon become clear when we start to use those equations. So please don't wait. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, let me, uh, I think we're almost out of time. So I will just try to go a little bit faster. Um, uh, we don't have to go through all 24 slides. Uh, here's just a few that we need to go through. All right. So uh, here's just a little bit more terminology. Uh, we will mostly, as I said, focus on this type of systems and this type of systems. Right? If uh, you and Y are both scalars, we call it single input, single output system. So we call it CISO, single input, single output. If they are vectors, we call it multi-input, multi-output, so MIMO. Right? Uh, the difference between those two is that some methods uh, work for CSO systems. Some vector, some methods uh, you have to, you know, sweat to make them work for CSO, for MIMO systems. So you uh, quite often we would uh, see things that work really well for this, and are very illustrative, but uh, they're not easily extended to MIMO. Whereas sometimes we would see methods that don't care. So that is important detail to keep in mind for uh, further discussions. Right. You don't have to memorize it. It will, it will be clear from the context when we discuss it. Right. Now, this slide, you, we have to pay attention. That is like one slide that you would actually use on your practice. So uh, I apologize for a little bit short on time. I will try to explain it uh, correctly. Then we can... Uh, finish the lecture. So here is the equation, all right? Consider this equation. Y triple dot plus A2 Y double dot plus A1 1 dot plus A0 Y equals to U. As you noticed, I labeled uh, A 
uh, to be have the same index as the number of derivatives, right? Also, uh, you probably notice that there is no a in front of y triple dot because we can always divide by it, right? We can always divide by the highest constant. It will be one simply. Okay. Now, what I can do is make the following substitution. x1 equals to y. x2 equals to y dot. x3 equals to y double dot. That probably reminds you very much about what we were talking about, the state of the equation. Uh, and yeah, they are related concepts. But let, for now, let me just make this substitution. And let me even mark it in different colors. Mm. Good. Now, I will take derivatives of all of those. So derivative of x1 would be y dot. But we know that this means it is equal to x2, right? Because of uh, this relation. Okay. What about the derivative of x2? Right? We differentiate this green equation. Well, x2 dot equals to y double dot, right? Because x2 is equal to y dot. But that y double dot is x3. Right, that's uh, what we said before. This x three. Okay. Now, uh, this is nice. Well, let's differentiate this last equation x three. Well, what we have is x three dot is equal to y triple dot. Right, because x three dot is y triple dot, which happens to be. Uh, let me use different color again. Happens to be this part of the equation, like u minus a2 uh, y double dot, a1 y dot, etc. So this is what it is. That is what x3 dot is. It is y triple dot, which we can express out of this equation. But uh, we can replace now all of those y's with our um with our um, uh, substitutions right like for example let me again use color coding x1 equals to y so it it goes here right and we get here like a0 times x1 we uh we have x2 is equal to x x2 is equal to uh, y dot, right? So it goes here. I guess let me get rid of this. So we can easily put uh, x2 here, right? Instead of y dot. And the last one, the last one is uh, y, you know, double dot, which we understand it is you know, x3. So I'll put it here. Okay. Uh, so you see what we done is we established a relation between x1 dot, x2 dot, x3 dot, and their uh, like x1, x2, x3, u, x1, like all of those. We can re rewrite all of this as a matrix, right? So x1 dot is equal to x2, right? So this times this, that means x2. Right? x2 dot is equal to x3. So this times this, that is x3. And x3 dot is equal to minus a0 x1 minus a1 x2, minus a2 x3, plus u, plus u. That's it. And that is how we can write equation in the form of ODE. So this was ODE, right? Rewrite it in the form of state space. So we said that we would we are going to use those two types of equation, ODE and state space. 
Here I showed you a process, how to go from OD to state space. Okay. All right, so uh, th uh, this is what you're going to practice on your first uh, lab. It's very important because in practice, uh, you almost always have models in the forms of OD, which come from theoretical mechanics. Theoretical mechanics likes second order ODs, and you would always get those from theoretical mechanics. You have to be able to transform them in the state space form. That is uh, how you do it.